I think about relationships as an exchange of energy. I also think about it as a safe space, and hence I call it sacred. It's a it's a safe space where you feel trusted, where you feel someone wants to try to understand, and where you feel that your openness will not be used against you. And beyond all of that, there's a sense of knowing. And when I say knowing, I don't mean someone's a mind reader and they know what you're thinking about. It's that as you start to talk to that person, you know they know what you mean, and because they've had so many experiences with you. I think new experiences are a beautiful way of doing that because you only learn new things about yourself when you do new things with yourself, right? Ooh, like great. you never, like we never do new things with ourselves. You always, you always doing the same things with the same people. But imagine you start doing new things on your own, and now you have new memories. And one of the things I've been talking about a lot with people is forming new memories. If you don't make new memories, the old ones will always hold you back, and that's why we're stuck in the old because we're not making any new ones. I think the challenge in a lot of our lives is that we're surrounded by the same sounds, the same sights, and the same people that we were in our past. And I see this with anything, and I'm sure you felt this when you went deeper into your faith. Did your circles change? Hundred percent. Right. When you went deeper into your faith, did what you look at change? Hundred percent. Right. So you look at my heart changed. Your heart changed because but internal and external. You may have someone who loves you deeply. You just never articulated what your love language is. You have to speak up. You have to share it. You can't. No one can read in between the lines. You can't expect that person to figure it out by looking at you. You need to tell them this is how I feel most loved. Right. This is what I need to feel. And I see so many couples that get scared about saying this or doing this, or they're. It's like hard for your ego because being able to have enough vulnerability and openness to say to your wife, "I need you to tell me I've got this," mm-hmm. right? Like words of affirmation. That I need words of affirmation. And you know the ego goes, "Oh no, I don't really need that for my wife." But you have to share it. If you don't tell them that, how are they going to know? You got to put your ego aside and be really open. I think about relationships as an exchange of energy. I also think about it as a safe space, and hence I call it sacred. It's a it's a safe space where you feel trusted, where you feel someone wants to try to understand, and where you feel that your openness will not be used against you. And beyond all of that, there's a sense of knowing. And when I say knowing, I don't mean someone's a mind reader and they know what you're thinking about. It's that as you start to talk to that person, you know they know what you mean, and because they've had so many experiences with you. I've been with my wife for six years now. We've been married for three, and all I'm trying to share is the journey and the process of figuring it out. That's all I'm trying to share. And when I, she was the first guest on my podcast that I interviewed, and the whole conversation was, here's all the mistakes we made in our first three years of marriage. Like this is what we got wrong. Oh wow, you, you went in. That's what we talked about because I wanted people to hear how much stuff we've worked through. Yeah. Because that's the fun of it. Because when you can have fun working through stuff and people are hearing that, yeah. they're like, oh, my relationship's not so different now. Right. Because if all I'm seeing is the selfies and the happiness and all that so, kind of stuff, so so for me, that's that's where my expertise is. My expertise is how do I share while I'm going through it. When anyone that I've witnessed and observed go through transformation in their life. Their environments have changed, and so for me, a lot of us are making it harder for yourself. It's like saying, "I want to start working out every day, but I don't own any trainers." Right? It's like that's not going to work. It's like doing the opposite. Like I want to go on a diet, but I'm going to keep chocolate cake in my refrigerator. Right? right? Like it's it's that. So you're saying so you're enabling. I want to get over the past, yeah. but I'm going to keep my ex's sweater right next to me, and I'm going to keep all these text messages that I could keep reading through what, again. Why do people go back and read text messages? Because from someone that broke their heart. Because nostalgia and imagination is more powerful, right? The feeling of nostalgia, and this is in studies too. Like the research behind nostalgia is, you always think things were better in the past with something like that. Mm. So you read a message, you're like, oh, but they loved me so much, and now all you're doing is, reality's here, and you've got your own version of reality playing here. So you're basically writing your own movie script up here, when reality is telling you this. And nostalgia is that script. It's that fantasy that's never going to. It's that fantasy that isn't real. So it's you saying, "I don't want to accept what is, 
and I'm trying to accept what if. One of the biggest things I say to people is just like, let's kind of break their space that they're in. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that person needs a space change and they, they need to get out of that zone. And so for me, I'm always encouraging people to start doing new things. Mm. I think it's so powerful when you go and have a new experience, yeah. when you try something new, you join a new class, you've never done it before. Because guess what? It's about finding yourself again. So you're now learning new things about yourself. You're now falling in love with yourself. It's about falling in love with yourself. Correct. And I think that the biggest mistake we make in that time is everyone's telling you, oh, when's the rebound? Like, are you going to date this guy? When are you going to start dating again? Or this girl? When are you going to be out there again? And it's almost like, well, no, maybe it's about I go inside this time and spend some time with myself. And I think new experiences are a beautiful way of doing that because you only learn new things about yourself when you do new things with yourself. Right? Ooh, like preach. you never like we never do new things with ourselves. You always you always doing the same things with the same people. But imagine you start doing new things on your own and now you have new memories. And one of the things I've been talking about a lot with people is forming new memories. If you don't make new memories, the old ones will always hold you back. Mm. And that's why we're stuck in the old, because we're not making any new ones. So the new the old ones just keep pulling you back. So the best way to make new memories is A set up an experience, do it with a friend that you love. And when you go out there, it's this technique that's often used for grounding and therapy and everything, but I use it for presence. And that's how we were trained in it as monks. When you go somewhere and you're like, I want to take a mental picture of this. How many times have you ever said that? Where you go somewhere, you're like, I want to yeah. have this in my mind and I want to keep it forever. I think the challenge in a lot of our lives is that we're surrounded by the same sounds, the same sights, and the same people that we were in our past. And I see this with anything. And I'm sure you felt this. When you went deeper into your faith, did your circles change? 100%. Right. When you went deeper into your faith, did what you look at change? 100%. Right. So you look at- My heart changed. Your heart changed. Because- but Internal and external. You may have someone who loves you deeply. You've just never articulated what your love language is. You have to speak up. You have to share it. You can't, no one can read in between the lines. You can't expect that person to figure it out by looking at you. You need to tell them, this is how I feel most loved. Right, this is what I need to feel love. And I see so many couples that get scared about saying this or doing this, or they're, it's like hard for your ego because being able to have enough vulnerability and openness to say to your wife, I need you to tell me I've got this, mm -hmm. right? Like words of affirmation, that I need words of affirmation. And you know, the ego goes, oh no, I don't really need that for my wife. But you have to share it. If you don't tell them that, how are they gonna know? You gotta put your ego aside and be really open and honest.